In the 2000s, Baron Cohen offered a balance of the mind-reading model, especially as an account of autism. A strength of the theory is that it can make sense of the social and communication difficulties present in the autism spectrum. A problem he points out is that the model focuses too narrowly on the social and cognitive aspects, but does not pay attention to the emotional ones. The key omission is that information about affective states available to the infant's perceptual system has no dedicated mechanism. Thus, the model is not in a good position to account for the fact that many people on the autistic spectrum also report that they are puzzled by how to respond to another person's emotion. And this brings on board the notions of empathy and empathizing. Mind reading is one component of empathy, but true empathy also requires an emotional response. Hence, in the early 2000s, Baron Cohen proposed an elaboration of the mind reading model, which he called the empathizing model. Empathy can be understood in different ways, but a conception that captures what Baron Cohen is interested in is in the following. Empathizing is the drive to identify another person's emotions and thoughts and to respond to this with an appropriate emotion. So, empathizing does not just entail the cold calculation of what somebody thinks and feels, which is what mind reading accomplishes. Empathizing is also about having an appropriate emotional reaction inside you, an emotion triggered by the other person's emotion. You empathize to understand another person and to connect or resonate with them at an emotional level. But imagine you could recognize that Jane is in pain, but this left you cold or detached or even happy. This would not be empathizing. So empathy has both cognitive and emotional aspects, and in the 2000s, Baron Cohen set out to accommodate the latter. The empathizing model adds two new components. We already saw one of them, the one called TED. However, the main theoretical addition is a new system called TESS, which is short for the empathizing system. TESS has the job of allowing an empathic reaction to another's emotional state. And whereas the mind-reading system was concerned with observation and explanation, the empathizing system is concerned with effect and action. It develops at around 14 months of age. The signature outputs of TESS are called E-representations which are the counterparts of Tom's M representations. E representations embed an affective relation between an agent and a proposition into a more complex relation involving the self and an affective state. For instance, the embedded representation submitted to Tess's consideration could be, mommy is sad that grandma won't come, where mommy is the agent, sadness is the affective state, and the proposition is that grandma won't come. This would serve as an input to Tess, Tess will then determine an emotional relation between the self and the contents of this representation. For instance, it could produce the e-representation, I feel sorry, mommy is sad that grandma won't come. And here you can see how all the roles in an e-representation are filled by the appropriate values. Here's an example that shows the connection between Tess and other systems. Suppose that the person sees that Al's face is tensing up and that he's clenching his fists and sweating. Tom's output via Ted and Sam would be, say, Al feels pain. This might be the input for Tess, which will embed this representation into an e-representation of the form I am distressed that you feel pain. This also illustrates a constraint on e-representations, namely that the self's affective state is appropriate to and triggered by the other person's affective state. Thus, a normally functioning Tess will yield I am concerned that you are in pain or I want to alleviate that you are in pain but not, I am delighted that you are in pain. Tom and Tess are distinct systems, as shown by some dissociations. For instance, according to Baron Cohen, autistic children have problems with both Tess and Tom. However, he hypothesizes that the condition of psychopathy may involve an intact Ted and Tom alongside an impaired Tess. So the psychopath or sociopath can represent that you are in pain or that you believe that he is a trusted friend of the recently deposed royal family of Fraudistan, thereby gaining access to your bank information or your credit card. However, they lack guilt or shame or compassion in the presence of, of another's distress. So, this is the empathizing model fully displayed and with its full cast of characters Ted, Id, Ed, Sam, Tom, and Tess. In closing, let me mention that Baron Cohen's is by no means the only account of autism. Other proposals for explaining the characteristics of the autistic mind include the idea that autistic people show a cognitive style characterized by weak central coherence, as well as the idea that the roots of autism can be found in the so-called mirror system in the human brain. These ideas, which I won't explain here, are tentative and very controversial, especially the second one. So I'll just provide these references in case you want to explore more. Perhaps you're acquainted with autistic people. 
or perhaps you have a child with autism, as I do. Well, that is all for now. Cheers. <laughs>